Back in, um, in 2010, we had a debate inside our international union about the future, and frankly, it was, at the end of the day, not everybody saw this as the ideological battle that it was, but what it was all about for those of us who were trying to change it was we felt that we were wasting our valuable resources at that moment, not responding to the fact that all across the United States, not Canada, we represent 30,000 people in Canada, but in the U.S. we were experiencing uh, austerity. They didn't call it that in the U.S. and Europe. They recognized what it is, but, but here it was just hard times. And hard times in transit meant that fares were going up and service was being cut. More of our members were being laid off than at any time since World War II. In one day in Chicago, in this town, uh, 14% of all the bus service was cut, meaning there were 1,200 transit workers laid off at a time when more and more people were riding transit. And by the way, that has been the trend. It continues to be the trend. Young people are rejecting cars in record numbers. They are not getting driver's licenses. They are moving to urban America. 81% of the people in America live in urban areas and need transit. And yet, the federal government, over the course of the last six years, at the very time that the local tax bases had eroded because of the economy, the federal government has absolutely walked away from funding uh, any operating costs for transit and looked the other way while transit has been cut. This is, there's a long story behind this, but it's really part of ignoring urban America. It's also part of the fact that part of this is that there is gridlock in Congress. There's nothing happening in Washington except bad news. So we had this internal debate in our union, and for the last three and a half years, we have been changing the way we do business. And dealing with, dealing with an economy in a country where we can squander a trillion dollars on blowing people up all over the world, but at the same time allow Detroit to implode on its own. There's something, there's something wrong about that. And, The problem is there's nobody in Washington in either party that's even going to say that. You can't prompt them to say it. So somehow or another, you have to get out there and change a, an entire social environment that has been bred by very wealthy people. So among the things that have happened is not only have we had members lose jobs and we've had passengers you know, overtaxed at a time when nobody will raise tax on a billionaire. 90% uh, of the people who ride transit in the U.S. have seen their fares go up at the same time their service has gone down. What we have seen, because you know we are the group that goes out and collects taxes on behalf of the government, in the neighborhood, in uniform, right? We pull up to the bus stop and demand a tax. Not too many workers have to do that. So what we've seen is more and more of our members being beaten to a pulp. And frankly, I, I don't think it's solely because of what's happening with austerity, but I think that's a big part of it. Um, there's a lot of anger in society, and folks don't know who to get angry at. We end up getting angry at people who need food stamps instead of people that are ripping off the system, and, and that, that's part of our problem. So here's our view. We have 100 people that ride our buses and trains for every one of our active members. And we are reaching out to those riders to build a coalition to force change. And we have decided that even though we have to play politics, you know, in Washington and go down and show up at hearings, and testify before people who really couldn't care less what we have to say as workers. Uh, we'll do that, we'll continue to do that, but our goal is to go out and get all of the people that are affected the same way we are on the same page. Our workplace is how America and Canada get to work. So we are out there now talking to our riders, and in order to do that, you first have to organize and frankly persuade your local leaders and members that this is an important thing to do. <coughs> Often, and this is probably true in every industry, we see our customers as the people that write complaint letters and you know, the ones who complain that we don't pull up on time and so forth. And we're trying to change that view in our union with the understanding that we care about whether or not the bus is safe, so do our passengers. If there are roaches on the bus, that bothers us, it bothers our passengers. It doesn't really bother the boss. So, let, let's, that's a good example, right? It's kind of creepy, but, you know, I saw one over there. Uh, no, 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 but, but here's, here's the routine, and I think you'll all relate to this. And, you know, I've been a steward of local president, you know, for many, I'm really old. 
Um, so let's say, for example, all of a sudden uh, in the bus business, uh, it's hot in the summer and they haven't done the right thing on the buses, and all of a sudden you have an explosion of roaches on buses. So you go to the boss, he doesn't ride the bus, right? Okay, so you say you gotta fix this. Yeah, I'll get around to it. So you feel angry, you know he's not gonna fix it. So what do you do? You write a grievance. And again, this is a good example, right? It's not where we're, well anyway. So, so what we're talking about inside of our union is you know, you write a grievance to a guy that really doesn't care. It goes nowhere, you don't fix the problem. So what we're saying is, you know, why don't we go out and talk to the people who also care like we do, who happen to outnumber us by 100 to 1, and say, join us in fighting to get the roaches off the bus, right? That's the basic principle, and that applies whether we're talking about steering brakes, anything involving safety. It also applies when you're talking about service cuts, layoffs, fare increases, and ultimately, because we know that bosses are spending a huge amount of time organizing the public against us, by saying, hey, they got those pensions and those wages and so on and so forth. We know that when we go out and organize the riders to work with us, we end up with them being on the right side of all our issues. So that's what we're doing. So, so very simply, very simply, and I know, you know, I got a lot of applause and there must be a lot of members in the room of the ATU. So you've heard, you've heard this all before, pardon me, but it's real simple. In 2014, we have a plan. We are going to go out and we are going to organize in bus stops and train stations throughout the U.S. and Canada. We are going to begin that three weeks from today in May. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but an executive order was signed declaring May International Transit Month. I know it was signed because I signed it, okay? So it's official. And, and the ATU took a vote. The ATU, all the people here from the ATU, and we have almost 500 people here, uh, we took a vote the other day and we made it so. So May, I hope you take this home. May in the U.S. and Canada is International Transit Month. We are going to get out there in bus stops and train stations all across our two countries and work hard to convince the riders to bother Parliament, to bother Congress, to stand up for themselves. We're going to convince them that we're all in this together because that's really the truth. And what's divided our countries over the course, particularly of the last 10 or 15 years, but it's been a constant drumbeat, is they've tried to convince us we're all in this alone, and you better get used to it. When we were kids, those of you that are as old as me, we were taught that we were citizens. We were taught citizenship classes. They actually had them in school. Now they ought to have taxpayer classes. Matter of fact, angry taxpayer classes. Because what they have done with our people is they have reduced us to bitter, jealous, angry taxpayers who hate each other because somebody else is getting my money. Isn't that what they you know, The ATU can't change other unions, but we certainly are trying to lead by example. Um, just this Monday, uh, in terms of training, we, we have, uh, coming out of our convention in August, we uh, got approval from our delegates to raise our per capita tax so that we can embark on a huge training program. Uh, this year we're intending to train 10% of our active members, not just the officers. We're going local by local, and the officers that are in this room, uh, you know, spent all week talking about this. We're going into our locals, and we're going to start training our members and talking about these issues of the political economy that are affecting us. And our board uh, last Monday voted to uh, buy the National Labor College so that we can start a permanent training center uh, to go out there. <laughs> management and the organization of the managers on public transit in the U.S. really suck. Um, no. no, they do, honest. I'm not kidding. They suck as bad as they suck in, in like the MTA in New York, you know. But uh, the management group of the, uh, the rural transit agencies is actually quite good. Uh, they're real human beings. You know, they have small agencies all over the place. We're working very actively with them. And matter of fact, we have tailored our program in Congress, the stuff we're going to be screaming about in the streets to try and bulk up the rural transit and support it. Uh, that's not where the growth appears to be going. We appear to be having uh, much more growth in cities, urban areas, you know, mega cities. Uh, you know, believe it or not, Phoenix, Arizona is gonna have a population uh, in about 10 years similar to what New York City has today. I mean, just think about that with the kind of transit you have in Phoenix. But we're actually, we're absolutely working uh, to try and bolster rural service. The second question was? I think it was about grievances going to the union. Yeah, we'll take them. We'll be happy. Uh, call our number. We'll be happy. Look, you know, the problem is it's very difficult for a union to discipline its own members. The best we can do is coach, and we certainly try to coach them. 
um, you know, any way we can. We'd much prefer to hear it first.